Oh, we are back down here on our makeshift workbench. Uh, my other workbench is still uh, being taken up by uh, my 3D printer for now. And uh, this is the receiver of the, uh, of the radio. Uh, as you can see, there's it's not not a a nice solid. Let's see if I can't get in there further. Let's bring it up a little bit. There we go. So there we go. As you can see, there's not really a printed circuit board. Uh, that's common, uh, very common with these older radios. They're just soldered connections and what have you. Um, so every single one of the capacitors you see in here. So these. Over here, this, 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 you know, um, they're all going to get replaced with new ones. Uh, I have your normal black capacitors that you see. Um, they are sprung a little bit for some of them for the uh, orange drops. And then some of them are also uh, the yellow type. Uh, and I found out that one of these terminal blocks here, which this is the main terminal block where all of our power comes in, is broke, so I ordered some new uh, terminal blocks to replace that. So th this is going to be the last thing we do, uh, just because of the fact that, number one, it's riveted in there, so I'm going to have to drill out that rivet and then um, grab the pop, uh, pop rivet gun and pop that, pop this back in there. There's a one of these terminals are, are, you know, have the nice little hole there. So this will replace that once I get everything else replaced. Um, if you notice, some of the, or let's see here, we have a 20 MFD, so that's 20 microfarad, and 25 working volts. So this guy right here, you see how big that is? That's about, I want to say two and a half, maybe three inches long by maybe an inch in diameter. That's literally getting replaced by this. Look at the difference in size. Um, so, as you can see, some of our uh, technologies have changed and improved, and we were able to make these capacitors a lot better. So, um, as I said, the reason why these are getting replaced uh, is because I know there's at least two bad capacitors in here. Um, this one right here uh, on the end, you can see that it's leaking out some uh, some of its fluids. And then this one here, you can also see the same thing. Um, the rest of these, they look, they look okay, but they're paper capacitors. You might as well replace them while you're in here uh, so you don't have to do it later on. Yeah, so we're going to remove each one. Uh, we're going to move each one, one at a time, slowly but surely. Looks fine. Um, in order to make sure we don't swap one of these around, because that would be very, very bad. Now. I do also have the wiring diagram for this uh, upstairs, I believe. Um, there's some really good. What the heck? Uh, there's some really, really good information out there on some of these old radios. Some of the rarer ones, you might have some problems finding to do it. Never mind. Uh, be sure to properly clean your tools after each use. Makes life a lot easier. Especially your solder suckers, because that gets up and in this tip here. I need a new one anyway, but... I have to... Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, so I was letting my solder gun heat up here. I got one of these cheapo... Uh, soldering stations here. Yeah, it works pretty good, at least for what I'm doing. I must have cut that off. Oops. Um, I replaced this cord. 
because when or when I originally got this uh, from its owner, uh, this cord was just well, the cord that was in here was literally so brittle if you touched it, it would fall apart in your hand. Is that all the way up? Make sure you have your workstation set up beforehand so you have all your tools that you might need. So this guy, let's see here, this is a 16 microfarad. And it is 450 volts. So, I think most of mine here are 450 or 600s. Um, so, Capacitors are one of those weird things. Uh, well, at least in antique radios, they're, they're a little weird. Um, so you always want to make sure your DC volts, so in this case, this one's 450. Um, you always want to make sure whatever you're replacing this with has the same or higher voltage. Um, going extremely high, it doesn't really benefit you too much. Um, but going a little bit higher can sometimes or can give you a little bit longer life. So the this one right here is a 475 volt uh, capacitor. Um, your capacitor uh, capacitance rating you can go in old radios you can go a little or you can go higher and you can also go a little lower depending on um, what you're doing. So, for instance, let's say I wasn't able to find a 16 microfarad capacitor. I could have went with, um, I think if I'm doing the math in my head right, 20. Or maybe I wouldn't want to go with a 12 um, microfarad if that's even available. But you can go a little lower or you can go higher. Because um, the, these capacitors they had a wide range of uh, for their rating well not necessarily wide but or I can't remember how to put that um, but they're kind of weird you can you can vary whatever you're doing with them a fair amount and you can get away with it place that right on there make sure our solder gives us a nice joint on top of the old solder. I said that's not your best case scenario doing that, but you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Um, so we're gonna okay. Make sure you see right where your old part's going. Here's that little. Uh, the part on the cap where he said it was leaking. So that capacitor is more than likely shot. I'll grab my mic or my um, um, what do I want to call it? Where's it? Get? Um, multimeter. My DMM. My dig digital multimeter. test that capacitor here in a second once I get this soldered in because I don't want to lose where this is supposed to go. Come on. You don't want cold solder joints, they just kind of suck, so here we go. We're going to pull out the digital multimeter, we'll set this to capacitance, and we know that it's supposed to be 16 microfarads, so we will go rain, nope. So our 16 microfarad capacitor is reading 22.35. Um, terms of capacitance. Okay. 
so I made a mistake. I did not pay attention to um, the axial uh, direction of this. So if you notice there's a minus and a plus, I have this guy reversed, so I'll just have to flip him around. Um, that was my mistake, and I will fix that here in a second. But back to what I was doing before. So we will take our positive and hook it to the positive of this capacitor. Your negative and hook it to the negative of the capacitor. And we'll go four volts. Oop, might help if you can see that. I'll do that. Here we go. See it's pop or we have this set to going to four volts. Oh. Oop, nope, I want that. So we're gonna let that charge for a little bit. And um, our amp meter is actually barely moving. Uh, so, of course, it's not going to move because we have two plates uh, uh, separated by dielectric. So, technically, you're not going to get any current flow through this. This is basically like an open circuit. But what's happening is um, you're charging one plate negative and charging the other plate positive. And uh, that's how a capacitor works, and that's why um, in DC voltage, uh, this is essentially er, that's essentially a uh, open circuit. So we want the negative over here, and then hopefully, ooh, I went too far there. Hold on. We gotta bend this a little bit. I did not pay attention there. This size. But. You know what? We'll go the short leg goes in first. It'll just make life easier for us. Go like that. Bring this guy over. And get him nice and. And okay, there it is. Okay, he's he's in there. All right, so we've had this in here for good enough. We will switch this to that, and we will test our voltage. Ooh. Yeah, um, so considering how fast I switched that over, that should be reading 4 volts. That should not be dropping as fast as it did. Um, so essentially that thing's leaking its, uh, everything it has extremely fast. So now we'll just unplug that. And, uh, yeah, we'll set that over here. I'll have to short that out uh, a little bit later. So, we have our first capacitor replaced. Get back down to the box here. So now, we'll work on our next one. Where? So this guy is a 450 volt, 16 Fahrenheit. Just the same as our last one. So, one of these guys. So... Next, throw away our bag. Okay. So, is this guy axial? Yes, it is. So, pay note that, you know, this side says positive, so this side's negative. So, we want to have our negative arrows pointing over here. Um, that's, that's great. Um... So we're going to, as I said, chop him off. <clears throat> Without chopping any wires. And then 
So we said that side was our negative. So what we'll do, we'll take our capacitor here. I just like tinning a little bit, just ahead of putting that in there. This makes life a little easier because then you don't have to hold the solder. Uh, when you put this all together. So he can slide up underneath there. There we go. And then, so on this guy right here, you'll notice we have this um, fiberglass protection on here. So I will, when I cut this off, I will peel this or we'll pull it off and we'll put this on here just to give it that extra bit of a protection because um, apparently they didn't want that shorting out with probably this pin right Ooh, that pin right there and that wire is now broken open so I will have to replace him uh, it'll just be something I have to keep an eye on uh, so this guy it just runs back up and over somewhere uh, I think it runs to one of these terminals, so that will actually work out really well. I didn't really wreck it, so... Anything can be fixed if you're... Good enough. I'm not even going to test that capacitor, um, even if it was good. I just wanted to show you that that one there that I just replaced was bad. So, yeah. so you go. got a nice bit of solder on there. Put some solder in there. And then So there's two capacitors replaced. Um, I might test this one a little bit later. He does got a little uh, uh, bubble right in here. You can see that. So. All right. So I'm not sure if the camera recorded everything I said before, uh, but so what I did. Er, so. I've already replaced these two capacitors. Uh, just in case, I'm just saying that just in case my camera didn't catch everything I did before. Um, the one capacitor was extremely bad. I hooked it up to there and uh, hooked up to my volt uh, power supply, let it charge, and then switched it back. And it was only reading point three volts when I had it or when I had it charging. at four so yeah Uh, as you can see, I replaced some of the wires with uh, some modern wire. If that will stay, I don't know yet. I'm debating that. We'll see if we can get it working, and then, and then I'll decide um, if I'm going to replace 
those wires are not. Come on, come on. There we go. Just enough to come on. Melt that back down. Casework's getting hot, but I can definitely see that this capacitor needed to be needs to be replaced just by looking at it. Yeah, that's 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 just that's great. You see that? That's probably not good. Um, I'm hoping to only see two wires in here that are chopped off. Which is what I'm seeing right now, which is happy news to me. Because there does seem to be two other wires down here, as you can see. Um, but I don't see any other stragglers just laying down and in there. Uh, so, that's positive. I'm not even going to test that guy. Uh, what did I say this guy was? This was 20 MFD... Back here. Yeah, that's great. Some of it just fell out of my hand. Yep, 20 MFD, 25 working volts, which is what I ordered. Which is surprising. So that, this, this big hunk is being replaced with that. So. I'm going to grab my wire strippers, which are over here in the box. Nothing fancy about these, right? I should really get a new set. Some of those fancy ones that when you strip it, it just... Ah! That's the wire I broke before. Who knows what this stuff is actually made out of anymore. Yeah, look at that. It's busted in multiple places. So there's something to be said about... You know, replacing with... Or... or you know, trying to keep something original, but at the same time, you want to be safe about it. I mean, think about it. If you if you go and buy an, a classic car, whoop, you're not going to leave the original tires on it just to say that it's original. Uh, that again. Who am I to talk?
solder that together. Um, so I'm going to stop recording here because my camera's running out of battery. Uh, I should buy stock in Duracell. But essentially this is all going to be the same. And then I'll just bring you back when I get it all together and explain any problems that I had. So I'm going to stop recording and bring you back later. Alrighty. So all the capacitors on this side are replaced. I think I have uh, I have, uh, two left right now, so I think they're on the other side. Because um, I'm not seeing them. want to just kind of peek in here. Um, so that's... That's good. Well, not good, but not bad either. Uh, so, I'm going to try and find my pop rivet er, set, and then I'll drill this rivet out and replace this. Uh, if you notice, I did solder some new stuff onto these. That's just because I wanted to make sure that when I replace it with uh, some of these. Oh, too far over. Uh, this cable coming in here, it's actually a three-wire cable, so you got the hot, neutral, or hot, neutral, and then the ground. Uh, I'm actually, this one doesn't actually, it originally didn't have a ground on it, so I'm going to actually solder the ground onto the case. Um, that's just to make sure that I'm not going to electrocute someone after I'm all, everything's said and done here. Um, that's just to protect everything and then you know if something in here goes pop well it's gonna go through the ground instead of through the case and hopefully that'll save stuff um, it might not be the best idea I'm not sure as I said first time rebuilding one of these radios so I'm gonna flip it over uh, do what needs to be done on the other side and then I'll come and do that so the cardboard capacitors here uh, you saw the bigger ones earlier, um, but yeah, uh, I'm shocked at how much difference this compared to the this guy here is. Uh, I just gonna I'm gonna tuck him back and over there, and maybe use some uh, captain tape and hold him in place. But yeah, that should be about it for this side, other than replacing the the. Uh, this, uh... Alright, so we got our new little, uh, header board here. That's all set up. Um, you can see we replaced some wires. Uh, just because I wanted to make sure that they were fine. There were some of them that were cracked and whatnot. Uh, so, we replaced them with some of this new wire. Uh, if this all works, these will probably end up being replaced again with some uh, new fiber coated uh, wire just to be safe. Uh, I'm going to run this up to the garage, put it in the er, into the case, uh, and then from there. Huh, that's hot. Um, and then from there, I'm going to bring down the speaker down here, unsolder some stuff, and then solder my jumper leads so this way I can test the other the other speaker. Um, just to be sure uh, it, this is working. I want to make sure everything's in line in order. Not, not all of a sudden I plug this in, it doesn't make no sound, and I get all... Um, uh, depressed that it's not making a sound, um, but uh, when it could just be that the speaker leads aren't right. So I'm going to go put this back up there. Uh, actually, uh, I'm also going to bring down the antenna. Uh, I chopped the antenna. Hold on, let me zoom out here. I chopped these antenna leads off because um, this didn't look like it was a pin connector back here, but it is. Uh, so I did chop those. Uh, I'll just bring that down and resolder them. It need to resolder it anyway. So I'll just re redo those. These wires don't look too bad. They're actually flexible. They're not snapping when I move them. Uh, some of the stuff in here was, so that's why that got replaced. 
but that'll be resoldered. The my my test speaker will be connected onto the speaker. Um, just for now, if it works, then I might be able, or then I'll let the person know, and they can decide whether or not just to. Um, there's a way around using the actual speaker. Uh, all right, so we got it all hooked up. And we fixed the speaker up. Um, I might zoom in down there and show you how I have it hooked up to the. Uh, I have a little bit of a small. Uh, speaker from a surround sound system that we used to have and threw away but we kept that for some reason luckily we did because I can use it to test this um, so I have that all hooked up uh, next thing I'm gonna probably, I had to slide this forward first uh, there we go. sorry for my attire but on that's on okay and everything in between we have something blow up or oh lights on that's a good thing